This is KGW News at Sunrise. We are like a family, we have a lot of students, and it was really hard on everybody. That is just one of several business owners dealing with a string of recent break-ins at the Happy Valley Town Center. We're going to share some surveillance video that shows a man who the owners think is connected to the crimes coming up in just a minute. And there's a new effort underway to prevent Oregon lawmakers from just walking out when they don't like something. Coming up, why it's garnered so much support from potential voters. And in our Sunrise Spotlight, actor David Duchovny. He'll be in town tomorrow, but he's not promoting a new X-Files movie. He has a brand new book. It's very, it's short, it's easy to lift. It won't, it won't hurt your muscles at all to pick <laughs> it up. Uh, it won't take long to get through. Uh, he weaves that dry wit through yes. the reservoir, which is being called like a twisted rom-com that takes place during the pandemic. I talked to Duchovny about that, plus the TV series that made him famous. Our conversation coming up this morning at 515. I was a huge X-Files really? fan. Yeah, growing up watching Same. him. Did you like you liked it too? I'm okay. the opposite. I swear I never saw a second of really? that show. Not okay. like a single second. I mean, it still I, holds up. You should go back it does, and watch. It's and they fun. had the movie too, right? They came out with a like couple a couple of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Excited <laughs> to hear from him. Ron Hill. Yes. Not weighing in on this X-Files. I topic. am in your camp. I just <laughs> for whatever reason never ever saw it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move over here then. All right, let's move over here. Mr. Kai, look at this. Look at this. I'm going to keep moving through. That's yeah, yeah, beautiful. Just, he's moving through. We have beautiful sunshine. I mean, the sun isn't up yet, but we're getting the beautiful blue sky. There's Mount Hood from our camera down Dayton at Stoller Family Vineyards Estate. With the fact that we cleared out last night, it's cool out. 44 in Hillsboro. I mean, I think the record low out of PDX this morning is in the mid 40s. 49 in downtown right now. 48 degrees in Salem. So the coolness will catch your attention. We'll go 50 degrees on average uh, at the bus stop this morning. Maybe cooler in your neighborhood. 67 at noon. We will see clouds increase during the day. I still have us around 77 when the kids get out of school around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you, Rod. This morning, we start with a traffic alert. Police have closed Southeast 82nd between Powell and Holgate to investigate a deadly crash. Officers have been in the Foster Powellhurst neighborhood for hours after a car hit and killed a person walking near Eastport Plaza around 9 o'clock last night. Police haven't released any more details about what happened. If you know anything about this crash, PPB wants you to contact them. Business owners in Happy Valley are dealing with a string of recent break-ins. We can show you some surveillance video here from one of the businesses that's been hit in the Happy Valley Town Center. Now, you can't see his face, but owners think the guy in that video right there is connected to these crimes. A restaurant called Noodle Man captured that video back on May 15th, and on that same night, there was another break-in just across the parking lot at U.S. World Class Taekwondo. The owner says someone stole documents with personal information, including the credit card numbers of families with students who take lessons there. Some of that information wound up being used on fraudulent charges. After this, you know, what is happening around, it doesn't feel safe anymore in Happy Valley, like, you know. It doesn't feel like the same it was like a couple years back. The other recent break-ins at the Happy Valley Town Center include one at Pho Zen Vietnamese Bistro and another just this past week at Pete's Coffee. In both of those cases, someone broke a window to get in. So if you have any information about these break-ins, you're asked to call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Also in your headlines this morning, the Washington County Sheriff's Office arrested a man facing sex abuse charges for violating his bail. 58-year-old Henry Bauer is accused of trying to volunteer at a Portland school, even though he is not supposed to be around kids. Bauer currently faces four counts of sex abuse, but get this, court documents show he went on a tour at Lincoln High School last month, volunteered with their theater department, and even attended a student cast party. Lincoln has now banned him from campus. A federal grand jury returning a new indictment on seditious conspiracy against five accused Proud Boys leaders. The charges stem from the January 6th attack on the Capitol in D.C. Prosecutors allege the man tried to prevent the presidential transfer of power by intimidating members of Congress and law enforcement and say it was all organized remotely by former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio. The new documents also show one of the members stole a police riot shield to break a window, allowing the very first rioters to enter the Capitol. 
President Biden has nominated Natalie White to serve as the U.S. Attorney for Oregon. She previously served as an assistant U.S. Attorney since 2012, focusing on organized and violent crime in Oregon. White was one of five U.S. attorneys nominated yesterday in South Carolina, Wisconsin, Colorado, and California. She must now be confirmed by the Senate. And those are some of your morning headlines. Clackamas County election officials will not give any more updates on the primary ballot count until the official deadline next week. That's according to the Oregonian. Clackamas County had been giving daily updates after the Secretary of State requested it. But then last week, the county reported incorrect information. Officials fixed the errors, adding the mix-up did not impact the election results. By Oregon law, all ballots must be counted and certified by June 13th. There is a new effort underway to punish Oregon lawmakers who miss work during legislative sessions. So a proposed ballot measure would actually disqualify any lawmaker with 10 or more unexcused absences from running for re-election. Yeah, last night on our show, The Story, Ashley Korslin talked to the group who created the measure following a number of Republican walkouts. We talked to a spokesperson from the group Hold Politicians Accountable. They got more than 183,000 signatures for their initiative petition, way over the threshold needed to get something on the ballot, and they're pretty optimistic. The most signatures that any measure has ever turned in in Oregon. Um, right now, it's with the Secretary of State's office. They have several weeks to verify all the signatures and make sure that they are from registered voters. Um, we expect that to be done in the next couple weeks, uh, at which point we'll really start kind of re-engaging the campaign. She also pointed to a poll from last year. It found 84% of Oregon voters are in favor of punishing lawmakers who walk out by disqualifying them from the next election. 78% said they also support fining those lawmakers or taking away their salaries. I think it's just really intuitive for people like they've understand the premise of if you don't show up to work, if you no call, no show to your job 10 times in a row, there's no way you would get to keep your job. And I think people are really sick of politicians who think they can play by their own rules um, and want them to be held to the same standard, if not the higher, higher standard than the rest of us. Now, she says they have not encountered any big opposition yet, but many Republican lawmakers likely will not be in favor of the measure. In the past, they've said they had, quote, no other option than to walk out and did it as a protest to stick up for their constituents. That was Ashley Corslin. OK, let's talk about what happened last night, because uh, did your house shake a little bit? If you're living in the southwest Washington area, there was a small earthquake. It was centered near Camas. It hit right around seven o'clock. It was a magnitude 2.8, which is very minor, but still enough for some people to feel it. We got a few comments from people on Facebook who felt it. Uh, this was Zafino who said that Lizette, though, wrote in. She said, yes, I did. I'm in East Vancouver. Also, Cynthia says she felt something. She was sitting in her car in Woodland. I looked around to see if there was a semi or something big driving by, but there wasn't. And then Lisa says it shook her chair at the Little League field in Canvas. Did you feel it, Rod? No, but I love the comment of the, of the, of the person out in the their lawn chair at the Little League. Yeah. Game. yeah. I mean, you're right on the ground there. Yeah, exactly. I think something's going here, boys. Yeah. We got a rally cooking. So, I mean, that's uh, a really minor quake, but it was also pretty shallow. It was only a little bit more than two miles in depth, which is considered shallow for mm -hmm. earthquakes. So, a um, little shaking and baking there. Yeah. Glad it was yeah. a little. Here we go with uh, our satellite picture weather system offshore. This one could produce thick enough cloud cover to give us a little bit of light rain coming in this evening overnight tonight. The, the main impact we think is just the fact that we're going to lose our early morning sunshine today with increasing cloudiness during the day. There's a Mount Hood looking off to the east. Sun pops up uh, in about 12 minutes or so. We'll start to get the sun up for 15 minutes from now. We're at 50 degrees out of PDX. A lot of the area is in the 40s. We only hit 67 yesterday. Remember in the evening it started to break up the clouds finally and then uh, we have really cooled down. It's 43 down in King City right now. 39 up in the coast range in Timber Junction. Uh, 48 in Salem. The uh, Kelso's at 44. Ben 41. We have a 35 spot right now out in Burns. It will be a beautiful sunny day across eastern Oregon. Here's a um, future cast. It does show this afternoon clouds coming. This will be really thin stuff when you get out on the other side of the Cascades. But clouds could thicken up 
up and totally take away our sun this afternoon. And here comes a little spritzy chance of some shower activity this evening. This is at 830 um, and then still some clouds around, maybe a trace rain early tomorrow morning. During the day tomorrow, we should uh, start to clear out that and become partly cloudy ish ish, if you will. I didn't really expect yesterday we had a kind of a delayed marine layer that came in and after the early morning sun we clouded over, which I did not expect. We'll see what how much sun we can break out tomorrow afternoon. Here's our next widespread rain. This is sped up. It looked like it was going to be coming in kind of overnight into early Friday morning and now models are picking up major ball rainfall coming in Thursday evening and then that kicks off the showery pattern that will be with this uh, through the weekend. Could get to 79 today if the thicker cloud cover holds off a bit, certainly up into the 70s. And then tomorrow, it's uh, enough afternoon sun to get to 75. Clouds increase Thursday. We have the evening rain coming in into Friday. And then that's showers and cooling down into the weekend and then drying out the first part of next week. And that is your seven day forecast. Rob, thank you much. Hey guys, stay tuned this morning in our sunrise spotlight. The multi-talented David Duchovny. He's an actor and a writer, and he's going to be in town tomorrow promoting his new book. It's called The Reservoir. We'll chat about that. Plus, he talks about the role that made him famous and why The X-Files still resonates today. Our conversation coming up in just a few minutes at 515.